You are wrestling with the principalities and powers. Your words are not human words. You speak as the oracle of God. When you, the marvelous believer, get conscious, number one, that you are God's headquarters. Number two, that you are the righteousness of God. Number three, that as Christ is, so are you in this world. Number four, that you are superior to the devil. You have been equipped. Lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. You are anointed, you are God-filled. You are the righteousness of God. Hello everyone. And praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to our weekly show, The Marvelous Believers Show, coming to you live from the Awema TV studios. It's always a pleasure to be here and to fellowship and to share the word of God with us. I feel like saying uh, praise be to God, the Father, like Paul said, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he has taken us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And the things that we've been learning are the things that come with the authority of being in this kingdom. I know we have learned too much, I mean so much already in the last two episodes. And today we are here for yet another step uh, of the series of You Are Superior to Satan. I loved last week, uh, Pastor Ben Isaac was teaching us about the ministry of angels, that the angels are ministering spirits. They minister for us. They, they, they serve us. They are there for us. And he was saying some of our angels have been jobless because we are not sending them. Let's go out there. Let's, let's take this authority. Let's enjoy what the Lord God has given us. Hallelujah. And now we wish to welcome uh, Pastor Ben Isaac to continue. Hello, welcome to the Marvelous Believer program. And I believe that you are being blessed by the things you're hearing. And uh, we would recommend that you share this video. You inform everybody else about this program that you're watching right now. Because we trust that the Word of God is delivering you. The Word of God is bringing you into your inheritance. The inheritance of God that is in every saint, every marvelous believer. Now, before I tell you what I want to tell you, I would like to remind you that when we say these things, we are bringing the word of God and God is not playing politics. God is speaking the truth. God wants your life to be upgraded. God is not a man that he should lie. When God speaks, what he says is the truth. Holy scripture says it is impossible for God to lie. God speaks only truth. And what we are bringing to you is what he thinks about you. God's very high opinion of you. And uh, it will do you very good to know that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Now, in the previous program, we, we've been talking to you about how superior you are to the devil. We spoke to you about the ministry of God's holy angels. These are all your rights, New Testament rights in Christ. And... I want you to know that uh, the word of God, let every man be a liar. Whatever man speaks is a lie. Let God be true. That is why we are hiding ourselves behind the scriptures. We are fronting scriptures. We are fronting the eternal word of God, which does not lie. It will do you good to believe everything God says about you. It is only ignorance that has worked against us in these areas. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed. This is God speaking. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. No, it did not say my people are destroyed because of principalities and powers hanging over their city. No, it did not say my people are destroyed because there is a powerful witch in the neighborhood. No, it did not say my people are destroyed because there is poverty, you know, the, 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 the vicious circle of poverty in the neighborhood. No, 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 no. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And so when the word of God comes, it dispels of, uh, 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 ignorance. Ignorance is our great enemy. For example, if somebody came here and began to pump up the devil and talk about how great the devil is, that is a lie. I have just proved to you with so many scriptures that the devil 
is not as superior as you think. He is inferior to you, the marvelous believer. But thanks be to God as the truth is coming, the scales are falling off our eyes and we are getting to learn the truth. We are getting to learn the truth and the truth is liberating us and delivering us and liberating us as making us free and making us free. Some of us have decided that we are going to live in the truth. Some of us have decided to confess the word of God and to believe it even uh, when initially we don't seem to see its manifestation but we are going to declare the word of God over our lives and it is taking a hold of us and changing our lives. Some of us have decided to walk in the scriptures. Listen, sin shall have no dominion in our lives. Not in your life, not in my life. Sicknesses and diseases have no place in your life. The Bible teaches that. Poverty has no rights over you. Shake off those shackles and live the life. If the devil has been the source for, of, of all these bad things in your life, this is the time with, with the new revelation of God coming to you. This is the time for you to shake off those things. Defeat is a thing of the past. You were defeated yesterday, but not anymore. Tell yourself that. I'm not going to fail anymore. Refuse to be satisfied with the crumbs. You belong to the high table of life set by God himself. Amen. Now, I want to show you something in the word of God that will change your life. I want you to be very, very, very attentive. But before I say that, I want you to know that God has invited you to celebrate life. Every vision that is in your heart will come to pass if you believe. Because those things are put there by God. Did you ever read Philippians chapter 2 verse 13? The Bible says your ambitions, the desires in your heart have been put there by God. It is God who is working in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. So, you know, don't, don't rubbish them. Those ideas of God. Those ideas have been put in your heart to take you to the next level. The devil, no devil can successfully stand in our way to impede, obstruct and hinder our progress. The marvelous believer is armed and dangerous. I'm going to read for you a portion of scripture and I'm going to explain something very, very clearly to you. Because this one has always confused people. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. I'm going to read all the way up to verse 13. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor. I told you you're armed and dangerous. You're dressed to kill. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the strategies of the devil. For we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Wait, wait. I thought we heard the other day that we are far above all principality and power and might. You remember that? We are far above them. Now, why is Paul saying we are wrestling with them? Would you like to know? Because just the other day, God does not contradict himself. The other day we were saying that we are far above them. But now here he's saying, the same book, in chapter 2, he said we are far above. Chapter 1 and chapter 2. But now here in chapter 6, he's saying we are wrestling. Listen very carefully and you'll never be confused again. In chapter 2 of Ephesians, the Bible says that we have been... Uh, ruled by the devil, influenced by the devil, our cravings, our desires, our lifestyle, our motivations, our aspirations were all influenced by the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the children of disobedience. Every non-believer is under the influence of the power of darkness. Their ambitions, their ideas, their plans, the, the things that drive them the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, that spirit and all its associates is the reason they are broke, busted and disgusted. Those are the demons which blind them and impoverish them and kill them and kill their children. That's the spirit that caused COVID-19 and the cancers and the diabetes and the poverty and everything. That spirit, the, this is the region of darkness. But when you gave your life to Christ, the Bible says you are delivered. Don't, don't mix these things. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. We have been delivered from that realm. 
We are no longer there. We are far above. Don't forget that. We who gave our lives to Christ have been lifted up far above all these principalities and powers. But hear me. Before Jesus ascended to heaven, before Jesus sat at the right hand of God, he gave what many Bible scholars have called the Great Commission. While we sit up here enjoying the presence of God, enjoying the ministry of God's holy angels, enjoying all the anointings and everything that God has for us. There is a command and Jesus says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, make disciples of every nation, dipping them, submerging them, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about uh, casting out devils. The Bible talks about uh, laying hands on the sick and ministering to the people, walking on serpents and scorpions. Do you understand? Understand. Our mission is not to stay up here sitting on our blessed assurance. Our mission is to go down there where the demons are oppressing people, where the demons are sitting on people, where demons are molesting people, where demons are scaring people, where demons are terrifying people, where demons are filling people's disease, bodies with disease. Demons are twisting people's legs. Kids born will, with malfunction. Pe people born abnormal. People born, uh, demon possessed people just walk the streets. All the, tr the wars, the, the, the troubles, the guilt, the fears in the world caused by demons. And those people down there constitute our mission field. When you, the marvelous believer, get conscious, number one, that you are God's headquarters. Number two, that you are the righteousness of God. Number three, that as Christ is, so are you in this world. Number four, that you are superior to the devil. You have been equipped. I want to repeat what I just said. When you, the marvelous believer, become conscious that you are, number one, God's headquarters. Number two, that you are the righteousness of God. Number three, that as Christ is, so are you in this world. Number four, that you are superior to Satan. You have been equipped. And you have been authorized and deputized to go down there, armed and dangerous. You have in your hand the gospel of the kingdom. Paul said the gospel does not have power. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. He says the gospel does not have power. The gospel is the power of God. So you're equipped with this weapon. You are equipped with the blessed Holy Spirit. You are equipped, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 5, that he has shed his love abroad in our hearts. You are motivated correctly. You have faith, you have hope, you have love. Now you have been commanded to go down there. Behold, I give unto you power to walk on serpents and scorpions and walk over all the power of the enemy. Now you go there and set other people free. There are billions of them hurting. They have problems without answers. They have diseases without remedies. They have fears without faith. They have guilt without pardon. They are sighing, crying, dying, millions of them, wasting in the mud, sitting, waiting, withering, dying. The demons are oppressing them, sitting on them, binding them, chaining them, scaring them. They are crying for help and nobody's helping them. They are all oppressed by principalities and powers. You come up as a God man, as a God woman, a marvelous believer, full of the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing. You've been authorized to go and announce to them, you're free, come out of there. Do you understand? Your mission is to go there, lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. You are anointed. You are God-filled. You are the righteousness of God. You've been authorized with the matchless name of Jesus. You've been authorized with the word of the living God. Go set them free. You are a God man as Christ is. So are you in this world. You can do these things. You can cast out devils. You can free them. You can set them free. You can call them up to where you are. They are under the principalities and powers. You are far above them. Now your mission has sent you to go down where they are. You are this action of bringing people out of bondage is what Paul is calling wrestling. We wrestle with the because they are those people are under principalities. They are all over the world. I'm telling you, I was in the US and I saw people under the bridges. I saw people on drugs. 
I saw people crying everywhere. It's the same story. I saw them in South Africa. I saw them in Brazil. I saw them in Canada. I saw them in my village. I was in Massabit just yesterday. I, suffering people. They do not know Jesus. Oppressed. Religions have deceived them. Oh, people have lied to them. The newspaper is scaring them. The TV is, they have no hope. You are the answer. So when you go down there with the love of Christ, with the gospel, you are wrestling with the principalities and powers. Your words are not human words. You speak as the oracle of God. When you speak, your words are a hammer that break rocks to pieces. The word that you speak, John chapter 6 verse 63, the words that you speak are spirit and they are life. The words that you speak are quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. When you speak, you speak like the ambassador of, 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 of God. The, the ambassador for Christ. Jesus said, I am sending you out there like sheep among wolves. Be harmless as doves. Be cunning as serpents. You have been authorized to go everywhere. The Great Commission does not envisage border posts and immigration rules. Your ministry is an international ministry, marvelous believer. Your ministry, Jesus Christ has authorized you to go around the world. I did not say it, Jesus said it. The coming of the Holy Spirit has removed borders re restrictions for you. You shall receive power, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. You shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea and all Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You have become an international witness for Jesus. And when you speak, the Bible says that when those people went out, Mark chapter 16, verse 20. When they went out, God joined them. And when they were preaching, Jesus Christ was confirming whatever they said with signs following. Do you know you have come into a miracle ministry? No, you may not be called apostle so-and-so. You may not be called prophet so-and-so. But as Christ is, do you want to be an apostle or you want to be like Christ? Do you want to be a prophet or do you want to be like Christ? The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, Verse 17, as Christ is, so are we in this world. In John chapter 17, Jesus prayed and he said, Father, the words you gave me, I have given them. Have you received those words? The words of Jesus healed the sick. The words of Jesus set the captives free. When Jesus said, woman, thou art loose, that was the end of her problems. The words of Jesus multiplied bread. The words of Jesus brought mercy and forgiveness to people. And he said, Father, the words you gave me, words from another dimension, the words you gave me, I have given them. I have received. Have you received? Receive those words and go set the captives free. The Bible says in John 17, Lord, the glory you gave me, I have given them. You have been glorified. You have been beautified by the presence of God. John chapter 17, Jesus says, Father, as you have sent me, I have sent them. You don't need to pray, send me. You are not Isaiah. Isaiah prayed, send me, Lord. You have been sent. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Are you hearing me? When you go down there, you're wrestling with the principalities and powers and forces of darkness. And when you come, they cannot impede your progress. Now, when you preach the gospel, the people hearing you must make a decision. Hmm, do I want to get saved or do I not? Do I want this freedom or not? But... You have been authorized to go anywhere. Do you hear what I'm talking about? When Paul is saying we are wrestling against principalities and powers, it does not mean you go lock yourself in a room and begin shadow boxing, shadow punching. It is active. You go out there. It's a war to convince people to come to Christ, to tell people that... People, listen, Jesus died 2,000 years plus years ago. Our mandate is to announce it. To announce. You have to tell them, listen, he, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was chastised for our peace. With his stripes we are healed. That is our mission. Announce to them. Tell them, hey, he broke the gates open. Come out. Come out. Stop suffering. Stop being guilty. Stop being sick. Stop being broke. The gate is open. Just come. That is our, we have been anointed to announce. We are announcers. We are, <laughs> we are announcers. We have been anointed to announce. The Holy Spirit is upon us to go and announce the good news to the poor. What is good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. Come out of bondage. Come out of bondage. That is what the anointing is for. Are you hearing me? And that 
is wrestling. That is the wrestling. That is spiritual warfare. To tell people about what Jesus has already done. Not shadow boxing. Locking yourself in a room and punching the air. This war has already been fixed. Jesus Christ has already overcome. I have told you. <laughs> tell the people you are free. Come out. And when you, see, when you say you, you are free to them, the chains will fall off when they believe your story. When they believe the gospel. Welcome to the super life. Welcome to the victorious life. You are bigger than you think. You are more powerful than you think. You are more anointed than you think. When you speak, the miracles will happen. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. The big ones and the small ones. The fat ones and the thin ones. The black ones and the white ones and the pink ones. In my name they shall cast out devils. These miracles, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And those of you who are watching me and you've never given your life to Christ, I really don't know what, what to do for you. I want to lead you to Christ. Say with me, Jesus, I confess that you are Lord of my life. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Come into my life. I receive the message that has been preached today. I'm born again. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you. Father, let the peace of knowing that we are saved, born again, children of God, let it come upon my hearers today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now listen. There are those of you who are having issues in your life. The diseases in this world are not just happening accidentally. Those diseases are caused by demons. Blindness comes from demons. Deafness comes from devils. Oppression, depression, addictions. Some people are addicted to all kinds of things and they do not know how to be free. Demons bind people with those addictions. But God has given us authority over every devil that causes those addictions. The diseases, the blood diseases, the bone diseases, the skin diseases, the complications. Let me tell you, the first time I lined up like 20 deaf people in a meeting, all I had to do because I finally learned of the defeat of Satan and his demons and the authority Jesus Christ has given us in his name. All I had to do, I told the demons to leave in the name of Jesus and they obeyed. Marvelous believer, you can do that. Go and tell the demons to leave the people. When the demon leaves, the person will be healed. When the demon leaves, they will be free. Don't go and negotiate with demons. Go and exercise dominion. I've always told people what I learned, that some situations do not call for prayer. Some situations, most situations, call for an exercise of dominion, and you have dominion. When Peter came to the beautiful gate and they found a twisted man, a man whose legs were useless, they were like rubber bands, the man had never walked for over 40 years. Peter did not pray. Read Acts chapter 3. Peter did not pray. Peter told the man, silver and gold I don't have, but there is something I have and I'm going to give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That was not prayer. He exercised the dominion and the man got up and walked. Do it. T.L. Osborne used to say, try it. You will like it. So I'm praying for those of you who have situations that have been caused by demons and devils. Some of you don't know. Some of those bad things happening in your life. You think they just happened. No, it's not because somebody doesn't like you. The demons are the cause of your atrocities. And I command those demons to leave right now. Satan, you know you have no dominion. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to take your hands off these people. I rebuke spirits of infirmity. I rebuke demons that are crippling them and impoverishing them and causing them to be afraid. I rebuke you, not in my name, but in the name of Jesus. Leave them alone. Take your hands off their bodies, off their finances, off their families, off their children. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. And I release the power of God to flow and bring life and health into their bodies is right now all across internet land i release the life of god be free be made every whit whole in jesus name if you're there i want you to open your mouth and begin to thank god for the victory i want you to begin to thank god for what you are believing god for in the name of jesus and testimonies are happening everywhere 
don't forget to contact this ministry, this television ministry. Don't forget to contact them and tell them what God has done for you. Amen. May God bless you. I believe that we are going to have the next section and another one and another one. Call us. Let us know what God has done for you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. We have had it. Uh, that, was, that was quite a piece. I am so encouraged and so strengthened and so empowered. And I believe you too, my marvelous believer, as you listen to us, you have been encouraged. Let's go out there. Let's do what uh, Pastor Ben Isaac was saying. Our mission field is the people that are out there and they are oppressed and depressed. We've already been seated in high places, far above powers and principalities. But God is calling us to go down there and find them and reach them and bring them out and tell them the good news and tell them they do not have to be oppressed again and tell them they do not have to be suppressed and depressed again. There is one who conquered for us all. Hallelujah. So let's go out there. Let's use the authority that Christ has given us. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out demons. Hallelujah. That is the marvelous believer's authority. That has been quite a series. And in case you are watching us and you did not uh, watch series, this series from part one, two, three, and now the fourth one, I still want to encourage you, go back to the YouTube channel and Find us there on Wema TV, Marvelous Believer, and you will never be the same. You cannot know these truths and remain the same. But I remember Pastor saying, you become a victim when you do not know. Now that we know, let's share this truth with our loved ones, and let's change the church of Christ, the body of Christ. We are all marvelous. We are all victors. We are all given the authority to win and to win. This has been the Marvelous Believers Show with your host, Lucy Lepore. And let's meet again next week on Wema TV. Good night and goodbye.